Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to work with buttons. And buttons are one of the most important like components in Qt. And so most of the times in your projects, you'll be working with buttons. Now there are many people like who use a rectangle instead of a button and modify that to make it look like a button, right? But I think you should use buttons uh, instead of rectangles. It's more semantic and it makes sense, and your code looks like clean, right? And most of the time in your projects, what you will do is you will add a new QML file for a custom button and then you will like, customize the button there and use that button everywhere else, right? So instead of like just defining a button everywhere, you will build an extra file for a button and import that and use it, modify it. So I'll also teach you how to work with custom components later. But for now, let's uh, work with simple button. So let's get started. Now, when I write button, you will see a warning here. It says unknown component. So for buttons to be working, you need to import a library in Qt called Qt Quick dot controls. Right? Um, if you go here and press F1, you'll see uh, Qt Quick controls provide types for user interfaces. Uh, if you scroll down, you see buttons are written here, right? So you can use buttons with this one. So anyway, uh, now that is working, let's give it some text. Obviously, the button can have some text, right? You can say click me. And let's run the application once and let's see the button in action yeah as you can see it says click me it's uh, in the top left so let's move it down a bit uh, I'll give some X and Y I'll tell you what X and Y is in the next video uh, this is just coordinate points to like uh, bring down the button to be visible like let's give it 200 and 200 right so it's a bit at the center and let's run the application again as you can see the button is here it says click me and now uh, obviously the button is quite compact so you can either give it some width and height or what you can do is you can give some padding now in button simple padding like 20 won't work you need to specify each left right top and bottom padding manually so what you need to do is you need to say left padding of let's say uh, 40 right padding of again 40 uh, top padding of let's say uh, 15 bottom padding of let's say again 15 and now when we run the application once uh, you will see that the button is quite a bit large as compared to the original right now uh, you can see that when we hover we get some effects we can also change it later uh, i'll show you how to change all of this later when we work with mouse areas right uh, but now for now like uh, i think it's doable now let's change the background of the button i hope you know by now that how to change the background right so there is a property called background and here we need to provide an item like a component so we will set a rectangle and set the color of the rectangle to be uh, ef 3 f 5 which is red and give it some radius of let's say 7 so the so the rectangle is rounded at the corners uh, let's see how it looks it's uh, quite a bit red but when you hover the color vanishes uh, we'll fix it later don't worry for now see one thing we are getting an error let's say it says the current style does not support customization that is because for now we have not we are using the basic button right so to fix this error like what you can do is you can import one of the themes of cute quick controls one is basic fusion imagine material universal windows right you can choose material this is nothing but this is nothing but a custom theme like which someone has made like if you remove the background you'll see that uh, someone has already like customize the button uh, and then we are providing another layer of customization over that one uh, let me show you how it looks it will be grayish and as you can see the button completely changed right so someone has customized this button for us and we can also customize it further as per our needs so if i uncomment this line of code and run this you won't be seeing any error here let me clear it now yeah, as you see, there is no error, and the background is back to being red again, right? So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's now uh, change the text. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the text is uh, black in color. Now you cannot just set the text color here directly, right? There is no property for that. So, simply providing a text is not like quite meaningful. What you need to do is you need to set a property called content item. And just like uh, background, it requires an item, right? So what I'll do is I'll give it an item of label. You can also give it an item of text or anything, right? 
or a busy indicator anything so for now let's give it a label and let's set the text here to click me and let's say the point size is 25 and let's say the okay as you know the default color of a label is white so let's have the application ones hmm it's black here okay okay the color of label is black here because we're using the material theme and in material theme they have fixed the color to be black so you have to manually set the color to be black sorry white so you can either use FFF or you can write white here I'll tell you what happened by default the color of our label is white but this material theme this customization changed this label's default color to be black that's why like we use all that color to be black there yeah now as you can see like it's white now right uh, so but when we click on it like nothing happens we need to handle this click event uh, but yeah so that goes for customization uh, now instead of this label uh, you can also like uh, give a busy indicator I'll show you what that is think of it like a loader right a spinner let's run the application once and show you yeah as you can see this is uh, loading uh, I hope it's visible I can change the color I guess Hmm, it's not a problem, just a bit. Let me show. Okay, I can do one thing, I can just remove the background so it's, it behaves normally. Uh, let's run the application once. Yeah, as you can see, the busy indicator is running properly now. Yeah, so you can give any item as a content item, right? So let's move back to the label i'll also show you how busy indicator works later um, but yeah i've actually never customized within busy indicator myself i'll do that and teach you a bit so so far we have like seen how to add a content item add a background give some padding right now let's uh, move on further and like let, let's see how to handle the click event like when we click on the button right uh, just a minute yeah so what i can do is like uh, there is a signal fired when we click on the button it says on click this is a signal which is fired when we click on the button every time we click on the button and when what whatever we want to do when when the button is clicked is to be handled in this block of code like whatever you write here that will execute every time this button is clicked so if i want to change the background of the rectangle every time the button is clicked let's do that let's say we give it an id so we can access it so what will says the background rectangle see directly referencing this means we are referencing this rectangle and i want to change this rectangle's color so i will say background red dot color equal to any new color which i want so uh, this is a cutes function like you can also set a manual color like let's say we can say whatever this is like let's see what this is this is red again Hmm. This is green, so this is the application works. Now it's green, and now when we click, it will stay green. So instead of that, uh, I am giving it a random color. So I'll call the function called q.rgba. It's red, green, blue. So here I will pass random values every time. So there is a function in JavaScript called math.random. Now don't be confused so much, like you will get all of this later. But matter random provides a num random value. So for every and now a color consists of red, green, and blue, right? The last three, last two. So we are just providing random values for all of them. So now when we run the application, you will see that every time you click on the button, the color changes to something random, right? So yeah. Now uh, one thing you have observed is like when we hover on the button, nothing happens, right? No color changes appear. So now, to be honest, uh, there is a signal like on, over, changed, uh, you can handle it, but to actually work with it, there is, you have to enable it, so you have to say hover enable to be true, uh, let, let me show you what happens, right, 
let's say when we hover on it, uh, we want the color to be something dark. Uh, this was the color of the background. So let's say the color should be something darker. Uh, let's say 9 f 3 f 5 yeah, let's work, work with it. When we run the application, but if you hover on it, we'll see nothing happens. Uh, that's because you have to enable hovering, right? So there is a Boolean property, hover enable, set it to true, and now run the application once. This is still not working. Okay, my red. Uh, actually, I have to set the rectangles color to it. Sorry, my bad. I have to give it an equal to. Actually, what happens is I have to set someone's color to red, and whose color should I set? I uh, set this rectangles color to red. So I give the ID. So I am now referencing these rectangles. And this rectangle's color has to be red, right? My bad. Yeah, now as you can see, the color has changed. Now, if I click and see, there is a problem with it. Like this hover uh, changed, like is fired every time the hovering is changed. Like when we move our mouse into this and move our mouse outside of this, both of the time the hovering changes, right? That's why uh, this signal is not quite good and there is a, actually a better alternative to this using mouse area where we have two signals one is on entered and the other one is on exited so when you enter the signal entered is fired when you exit like when you move away from this button the exited signal is fired so I'll teach you that later when we learn about mouse areas but for now I think this is not a good signal so actually no one uses forward uh, so don't, don't use it uh, there is a better alternative to this right so yeah anyway uh, thank you for watching and this is all about buttons and uh, most of the time uh, users will like build a custom button where more other features will be used so but this is i think good enough for now anyway thank you for watching and take care and see you next